Hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily and I'm so happy that you are here with me today. In today's video, I am going to be working on a new design team project. I have been recently been invited to be a part of Tu Casa de Papel's design team and just recently I did an announcement video where I told you guys that I would be doing that so exciting <laughs> okay in that other video I of course made the announcement and then I also worked on a project featuring tu casa de papel's digital printables well that's what I'm going to do today and I am going to be working I have them right here with these digital printables and I'll go over all of that all of the information I will also flip through all of these beautiful pages and I'm also going to work on some of the leftover digital printables that I had from the other project. And so just bits and pieces of beautiful, beautiful digital printables. And I will show you all of that in just a moment. But I want to give you a peek into the project that we will be working on. I have them right here. I'm looking down at them. They are so stinking cute. Now, you've been following along my channel for a little bit right if you are new to my channel thank you so much for being here if you have been here with me for a while i appreciate you so much you guys are awesome well you may be familiar with my signature little envelope little house envelope pockets yes i know that's a that's a tongue twister there. And these are little houses that I make using junk mail envelopes or a regular number 10 size business envelope. Well, okay, we are going to be working on little house envelope pockets today, but in today's video, we are going to call them casitas. <laughs> casitas is little house. So casita envelopes okay you guys I'm gonna show you prepare yourself for cuteness here is one. Oh my gosh look can you see that let me see oh my goodness it is so stinky cute it's a little casita oh look at it and inside there's a tag so I'm gonna pull that tag out let me show you the tag oh my gosh these are tags in the digital printables that are ready to cut out and this is from so I'm telling you I'm using a few a few different kits today and I'll show you exactly where this one came from so so stinking cute and I'll show you a close-up when I flip the camera over so you could see what I do but I've added some trim and then a little flower to her hair and then some beautiful ribbons up here and some eyelash trim ready to cut out. You can leave them as they are or you can embellish them. Either way, they're gorgeous. Gorgeous! Okay, so here's the envelope again. Oh my gosh. And I'll show you these again once they're flat on the table. I know they're getting a little bit washed out with the light, so I hope you're able to see that. Okay, anyway, here they are. Here's another one. Oh my gosh. Look at the little casitas, you guys. They look like little houses. Can you see? And this is the envelope. Oh my gosh. And then I've used a faux postage as a little chimenea <laughs> and a little door or a little window. And then again, a pocket with another beautiful tag. So let me just remove that one. Look at that tag. And I've used some of that same ribbon, that same trim added a little flower to her hair oh my gosh but look at this right here so stinking cute let me know in the comments down below if you have made little house envelope pockets from junk mail envelopes you guys um i love repurposing envelopes love 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 working with envelopes and i love working on little house envelopes or now casitas look at how stinky cute Oh my gosh, I've added some trim. So stinking cute. We're going to make one of these, okay? We're going to make one of these, you guys. So if you've got the digitals, um, I will have all of that information linked down below. And I've got a discount code for you. So you can, so you can go and get yourself some. And uh, we can work together. If you don't have them right now, just put me on pause. Go get your digitals. And uh, let's work on these together. So this is the second one. And then let's see, which one are we doing? I've got them all right here in front of me. And where's the one that we are going to work on? Okay, I'm not going to show you that one just yet until later. <laughs> okay, and this one right here. So these three that I'm showing you, I made off camera. 
Look at how cute. Look at how beautiful this little fringe trim looks. Oh, look, little house. There's the roof. And then the little chimney right here, right here, right? Chimney and then the door and the window. So stinking cute. I've collaged the back. Oops, I didn't show you the other ones, but I collaged the back. You can leave it plain if you want. But these papers are just so beautiful. And there's little scrappy bits left over that you can just collage on the back. And then, so let's check it out. And then look at this cute little tag. So again, this one I didn't embellish too much. I just added a little paper flower there with some of the same little ribbons and trims. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I get so excited. Okay, look at how stinking, stinking cute. Oh my gosh. You love them, you love them, I love them. Okay, so I'm gonna set these down. We're gonna work on a fourth one and we're gonna do it together. So you guys ready to go? All right, I'm gonna flip over the camera. I'm gonna show you the digital printables that we are going to be working with. And supplies, let me tell you what supplies you need. All you need is junk mail envelopes. So I've got some here. So here is a junk mail a junk mail envelope. These just, you know, they're free in the mail. Or you can use a regular number 10 envelope. So if you don't have junk mail envelopes, just a number 10 envelope. Uh, that and some scissors, paper cutter, bone folder. You'll see all the stuff that I have laid out because it's, it's quite messy. It's going to get messy, you guys, but it's going to be so much fun. Okay, let's get ready. Let's get started. By the way, if you are here and you're not subscribed, join me you guys click the subscribe button I've got tons more of this going on you're gonna love it thank you so much for being here now let's get started I'm going to begin by showing you these beautiful digital printables from Tu Casa de Papel's Etsy shop and I will have that shop linked down below along with the discount code that I mentioned earlier, okay? So just open the description area and you'll have tons and tons of information. This kit is called Spanish Vintage Receipts. Absolutely gorgeous. It is vibrant and colorful. And I love how she has curated this set, you guys. Um, the Those applique images, and then the way she's just collaged, digitally collaged this for you. So it makes it so easy to work with. I was telling my sister the other day when I was creating the little house, the little casita, we're going to call them casitas, um, the casita envelopes at how quickly I was able to finish them. And I said to her, I think I feel, well, I feel like I've missed a few steps. She said, did you? I said, no, <laughs> they're complete. But it was just so quick and easy to be able to work with these digitals because all the collage is already done for me. Super easy, super cute, super beautiful. I printed these on regular copy paper, you guys. Nothing fancy, just what I use in my, in my printer. Just standard copy paper. Because I knew I was going to use these for collage, I wanted something that was a little bit lightweight but let me tell you, the color and the vibrancy still shows through. And uh, and I could use these as journal pages if I wanted to. But I am going to use this set specifically for making ephemera and working with um, collaging these. And so I wanted something a little bit more lightweight. Up ahead, I will point out how I used a heavier paper for printing out some tags. I will pull in some bits and pieces from a couple of other digital printables, and I'll talk about those in just a moment. Um, I had some of those extras left over uh, from the journals that I'm working on. If you'd like to see that video, how it all got started and how I became a part of the um, Tu Casa de Papel's design team, I am going to link that video down below so you can see how it all got started. Okay. These are some of the junk mail envelopes that I have pulled so that I can repurpose these, you guys. If you get these in the mail, sometimes they're like inserts in your junk mail. I save all of those. I save the outside envelope, I save the inside envelopes, and I put them to good use. The very first thing you will want to do, I'm gonna walk you through the steps to create this little casita envelope, is you are going to seal your envelope. 
If you've used a junk mail envelope, remember how we like to open our mail now by making a very small cut on one of the ends, either the left or the right hand side. So if you've already done that, then you're one step ahead. But if you're using an envelope that still hasn't been sealed like this one, then just go ahead and seal it. I don't lick the envelope. I think it's kind of gross. <laughs> so I'm just going to use some glue. And the glue that I have in that bottle, you guys, is Mod Podge. I had this huge container of Mod Podge. I mentioned it before. I thought it was 32 ounces. It's actually a 64 ounce bottle of Mod Podge. So that is what I am using in that uh, glue bottle. Okay, so you see now how I cut a sliver of one of the ends, just enough to open up the envelope. So now what we basically have is a very long pocket. I have tons of other videos where I show you how I make these little house envelope pockets slash casita envelope pockets. And I will have links to those videos also down below. So we are now gonna fold it over. I don't measure you guys, but I wanna say that's about two and a half inches, which I'm folding over and then using my bone folder to crease it. You see now the look, and this is the foundation or the base of our casita envelope. I'm now going to show you how I get to that pocket. So now that I've folded it and we have that crease line, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to open up or make a cut on the opposite ends of that top flap. And I'm showing you here how I'm doing that. I am going to go past that fold line about half an inch. And that's what's gonna create that little half an inch gap in the pocket. So only half an inch. You could measure, you guys, you can grab your ruler and you could make some precise cuts and measurements. I eyeball it and it works out just great. But please keep in mind, I have been making these for some time now. And so I can go through them pretty quickly. If you're starting out, go ahead and take out your measurements, I mean your ruler to make measurements. So now here is the really cool part. So now that I have cut down half an inch past that fold line, do you see how I'm just kind of pulling it a little bit? Pulling it and then it's going to stop right where I made those cuts on the side. And now I'm going to fold. So now that is the top of the inside pocket and see how now you have a little half an inch gap. It just makes it easier to get your fingers in there, to be able to put a tag in there or a card and be able to pull it out as well. So now I'm, I'm going to cut the excess, but only up to that fold line. I'm leaving that little half an inch strip there and I'm going to glue it down what this will do is reinforce that top pocket because we're going to be placing things in it and putting things, you know, and pulling things out. And so we want it to be somewhat durable. So I'm leaving that little top flap up there and I'm just going to glue it down. And like I said, it just reinforces it so it's not so flimsy. I am going to collage over it, which is going to further enforce it. But if you weren't going to do that, you've made it a little bit stronger than what it is. You could, if you want to, cut up to the edge, but I like leaving that little gap there. And now I'm just going to glue it down, and this is how we make the pocket. This is how I make my little casita envelopes or my little house envelopes. Ta-da! And that's your roof. How cute is that? Any envelope will work, you guys. Look at how cute that is. And now the next steps are to collage and embellish and turn your plain junk mail envelope into a beautiful little casita. So stinky cute. All right. So we are also going to, not, not only am I going to collage the exterior, but I'm also going to line the inside of that pocket. And I'm gonna show you all of those things. 
This is the page that I have selected to collage with. And again, it's from the Spanish Vintage Receipts. All I need is one sheet of paper or one printable sheet to collage this envelope. And I'm going to put every single bit of paper from this one sheet and I'm going to put it to use to collage all of this envelope. You'll want to measure the width of your envelope so you know exactly where to cut. Some junk mail envelopes come in different sizes, but if you are using a number, let's see, a number 10 envelope, those are pretty standard. And I want to say those are like four and uh, four and an eighth. <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say is measure the width of your envelope. And mine is about three and seven eighths wide. A number 10 envelope is just slightly wider. And this is what I'm going to use to place on the front of my envelope. Now I trimmed off some of that white border. You could leave it on if you want. I really don't mind. And now I'm just making sure that it is the perfect width. And now I'm going to measure the length of the front of the envelope up to where the pocket opening is because I'm only going to collage from the top of that opening down to the bottom. And now depending on how you folded it, your measurements are going to be different from my measurements, you guys. And so this one is just a little over five inches. I know lots of measuring, but once you once you get the hang of it, it's gonna go by so quick. So I'm just putting them kind of side by side so I can make my cut. So you could see how it's just a little bit over, over five inches, maybe like five and a quarter inches. I'm making the cut. And now you'll see how I'm going to place it over the front of the, of the envelope and how it's just gonna match up perfectly. So from the bottom right up to the top edge of the opening, that's all I'm going to do. <laughs> And so just one sheet will do it. One piece of paper is going to cover that entire front. Do you see how easy that was? Um, in the past, when I've made these before, I've taken bits and pieces of paper and just kind of glued them and collaged them on the front. This is super easy. I think that's why it went by so fast because the printable, it's already collaged. All of that work is done. So just cut it to size and then glue it to the front. Notice how I'm using new glue, you guys. Remember how I was on a no glue spend because I had been hoarding glue for a really long time? Well, I've pretty much gone through my glue supply. And so now I'm back to getting my favorite glue sticks and also I purchased a bottle of Fabri-Tac. Those are just staples, you guys. The Fabri-Tac, the um, the glue stick, whichever you like, those are staples in your craft room. But for years, I've been purchasing glue like it was running out of style. And unfortunately, I'd say 50% of the glue that I had, you guys, went bad. It just dried up. So I'm not doing that anymore. I'm only buying the glue as I need it. And of course, I'm going to be using that 64 ounce bottle of Mod Podge until that's gone. Okay, so what, are, what we're doing now is I am going to measure and cut so that, so that I cut a strip that is going to line the inside of the pocket. Now, these obviously don't have a window. You've seen how I have collaged window envelopes and I insert the lining all the way to the bottom because it's visible through the window envelope. Not in this case. I'm only going to insert the lining maybe half an inch into the pocket and I'll show you here because I'm not letting this paper go to waste. So I'm kind of cheating a little bit. So I barely slid it in maybe half an inch. You can see right here, I'm going to show you right there. And I'm going to even it up on both sides and then I'm, I'm going to glue it down. So you could see there's a white border more visible on one side than the other. So I'm going to center it, position it, hold it with my left hand. And now I'm going to grab my glue stick. So just setting it, 
very carefully so it's even on both sides and I'm going to add the glue and then smooth it over. Super, super easy. This is the easiest way to add the lining to the inside of your envelope and now smooth it over. Ta-da! And I'm not going to cut the excess. I'm just going to fold it over. And then I will crease it. Again, I'm going to line it up with the edge of the envelope, make my fold, and then smooth it over. And I'm also just going to glue it down. So there's no need to cut that strip. You just fold it over and it just makes collage so stinking easy, you guys. I love making these. I had no idea. Had you asked me a couple months ago what my next style of Little House envelope pocket was going to be, I would have never thought to make casitas. Never thought it would be a casita. So, so, so stinking cute. And the reason I'm calling them casita is because, well, for obvious reasons, these papers are, have a, have a Spanish influence to them. And so of course we're gonna call these casitas. So now I am creasing at that fold and I'll mark it with my bone folder. We don't wanna lose that crease. And so I'm gonna open it to, just to make sure that I still have that half an inch gap in place. There it is. And that's what makes it easy to insert and pull anything out. You can add you can add guest checks to this, tags, um, journaling cards, anything you want. By the way, I like to use these in my junk journals as a floating pocket, but I've also used these as a gift card, you guys, in lieu of a birthday card or a congratulations card or just a greeting card. Just in lieu of that, you can use this as part of your as your gift and inside you can insert your greeting. You can put a little money in there if you want to or even a gift card. So many great uses. And then on the back of it, you can write your sentiment down. So that's also a great way to use these little casita envelopes. Now notice how on that top roof flap, I had a little white border. Sometimes I'll go in with some distress ink and distress the edges. But I'm just cutting a rectangular piece of paper from the scraps, folding it in half, and I'm going to glue it to cover that white edge. There's so many different ways that you could do this. If the white border doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother me at all, um, but I decided to cover it anyway. Um, you, can, you can collage over it. You can, you can add you know, little scraps of paper that you have left over from your digital and just cover it right up. This makes it really nice because it reinforces it on the top and on the back, almost like a little, little hinge, even though it's not going to open like that, like a hinge, but, and it also coincides. So that upper left hand side will match with the lower right hand side because of that same teal colored trim. And then I'm just going to cut the excess. I hope you find this um, easy. <laughs> you have to give it a try, you guys. There may be a lot of steps, but if you enjoy collaging and piecing things together, then you are really going to enjoy working with these uh, with these pockets. I could leave the back as it is, but because I still have this page to work with, I went ahead and decided to collage the back. And I switch adhesives. It's whatever is within reach. This Mod Podge works just fine. And I'm just repurposing an old bottle of art glitter glue and I covered it up with some pretty washi tape and then filled it very carefully with the Mod Podge. That was kind of tricky. It did get a little bit messy, 
but in the end, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. There's a little white edge there on the upper right hand side. I'm just going to tear a little piece of scrap and I'm going to glue it over. And I like how that looks. It just adds to the whole feel of the, of the collage work that's already part of the digital. And it turns out really, really cute, you guys. If you're familiar with my junk journal flip throughs, I like to include this little house envelope pocket on the very first page of the very first signature of my junk journals. It's almost like when you open it, it is welcoming you, like welcome home. And you have your little house or your little casita right as you open the junk journal. So now I'm just going to finish collaging and adding that to the back. And it's looking so cute. I love this coral paper. The color coral is one of the best colors to use uh, in design and in fashion because it's almost a neutral. It goes well with any color you pair it with and it also goes really well with any skin tone. So regardless if you are fair skin, if you have darker skin tone, coral color works well with every skin tone. Um, and that's um, in regards to fashion. And so it works the same with design, interior design and also um, in uh, paper crafting. Once it's all, once it's all down, I, I had said that you could use, you know, if you're going to use these as a greeting card, you can write your sentiment on the back. I love journaling over printed paper. I love that look. Um, and so you can do the same thing with these envelopes. So don't be afraid to journal over or write a sentiment over a printed background. It'll look really, really nice. All right, let's decorate the front. I'm gonna pull in some of the other digitals. And this one here comes from a digital called Summer in Mexico. And this is from the journal pages, Summer in Mexico journal pages kit. And I'm going to use the little strips. They're like little washi strips. And I'm also going to use some of those faux vintage stamps. The stamps I'm using as a chimney on the rooftop. And here are some of the little washi strips. Oh, these are so beautiful. They are actually um, digital prints of, or digital images of trim, embroidered trim. And when you're holding it, you guys, it almost looks like you could feel the embroidery on those little pieces of paper. It adds so much texture just the look of texture onto your project. Now, these little tags right here, they come from the vintage Latin America. No, no, not that one. It comes from the Summer in Mexico ephemera kit. So you have the Summer in Mexico journal pages and then the Summer in Mexico ephemera kit. And that's where I took these little cut aparts to make the doors and also the little journaling tags the round ones to use as windows. So stinking cute. And then that little washi trim came from the Summer in Mexico journal pages. And I'm going to use that to trim the edge of the roof. And you can see I'm pointing out how I've done that on the other casita envelopes. And you can use single or you can double it up if you want it wider. So cute. So it goes by pretty, pretty quick. I have a lot of these that I've already cut off camera, um, but I ran out of these. So I'm just gonna quickly fussy cut around these little labels. I'm not gonna show you every step. So ta-da, <laughs> here we are. And I love that little print. It's like a sarape. Sarape is uh, like a blanket, almost like a, uh, yeah, like a blanket that you wear over. And that sarape print 
on this little label is so beautiful. And I chose to use these because of the size, the rectangular shape as my door. For some reason, I tend to use the doors on the left-hand side. I did make one of those with the door on the right-hand side, but for some reason, I lean towards the left with my door. I don't know why I don't center it. I could do that as well. Maybe I'll do that in the future. I always put it off to the side. I left a white border around the round label so that it pops against the background, but I'm just going to trim it up a little bit more but still leaving a tiny sliver of white border all around, just so it pops against that background. These little labels were perfect to use as windows, you guys. <laughs> and the roses, that, that applique on the background, it looks like flowers growing over a trellis as they would if you had them leaning up against your house. Oh my gosh, that's what this reminds me of. So beautiful, so beautiful. And now let's add smaller details. Oh, but first we're, we're going to add the chimney. Now, the faux postage stamps, I printed on the copy paper, but because I'm going to use it as a chimney, I want it to be a little sturdier. I could have printed it out on heavier cardstock, but I already had it. All I did is glue it down to some of this um, packaging that I had left over from some stickers. So when you come across good packaging, just save it. I like to make, I like to do collage work on these as well. So I save all of that. It's sturdy, sturdy cardboard and it worked great. To, um, to use with the little faux postage stamp. And then I'll just glue it onto the rooftop and it'll be sturdy. Oh, so cute. Aren't those perfect? Perfect. I love these because they're like whimsical little houses. You don't have to use traditional, you know, um, looking chimney or traditional door, traditional window. You could, but this is so perfect. You need to see things differently. You know, keep an open mind and look at different shapes in the digital printables that you have to try to use them up as different elements in your work. The rectangles, the circles, the squares make perfect doors, windows, and chimneys. So, so now we're going to add some fun little details, just things that I have from my stash. These are enamel dots that I received in Happy Mail. So I'm going to use one of these as a doorknob. And any size works good, but I like the larger one. And now you could see how it's taking the shape of the door. And I, I just received this sticker sheet in Happy Mail as well. And how perfect, you guys, how perfect is this cactus with these casitas? Oh my gosh, it was meant to be so stinking cute. I love it so much. So I'm going to just add some of these. And to make sure they stick down, and it's not that I don't trust the adhesive on these, but I want to make sure they really, really stick down. So I'm going to use Fabri-Tac, just a little bit of it, on that foam square to make sure that it is secure and in place. I missed you, Fabri-Tac. I love you so much. <laughs> You guys, I also have, um, I almost forgot to mention, I have an Amazon link down below. So if you guys are curious uh, uh, or want more information on the adhesives that I use or even um, the copy papers that I use, I have that information in the Amazon affiliate link down below. I'm going to add a few more of these because I just love them so much. One is just not enough for this casita. And I think I even use a third one. I can't quite remember.
Oh my gosh, they look so good, you guys. Cactus in Spanish is nopal. And nopales are very common in Mexico as they are in, um, in the Southwest, like uh, Nevada, Arizona. Um, so yeah, and so how perfect are these? So, so cute. Have you ever been to Mexico or even um, areas in Southern California and uh, Arizona where you've got the adobe houses and they're just so vibrant and so colorful? It's one of the things that I love a lot about Mexico is the use of color, especially in the homes. So these were so much fun to create. There you go, so cute. I just happened, I, it just worked out so well. Now I've already cut some of these sentiments out and they came from, what kit were they? They were in the Summer in Mexico ephemera kit. No, <laughs> or yes, yes, yes. They were in the um, Summer in Mexico journal pages. I will have the link to Yvette's Tu Casa de Papel's Etsy shop down below. And also a list of the names of all the digital printables that I am using. So just open up the description area and you'll find tons of information there. I could have placed this on the roof line, but I actually like the way it looks over the door. Isn't that beautiful? It almost, gives a little shop vibe, doesn't it? A little, little tiendita, which is little shop. Let's add some of this washi trim to the edge. I was going to put it right alongside the bottom edge of the roof, but I'm going to add some fringe trim to that roof line. Oh, so cute. So I'm just gonna use this strip and glue it down right above this beautiful turquoise trim. Oh, it's like a little fiesta. <laughs> so cute. Any trim would do. If you have, it doesn't have to be fringe trim. If you have, uh, you could use pom-pom trim or you could just, just use, or just use these little digitals. I just happen to have uh, trims that I really want to use up you guys because I seem to be hoarding a lot of trims and ribbons So I need to put those to good use and they work so well with these digitals But if if you are going to work on these you don't have to have the trim because this embroidery washi trim is Perfect you can use it single you can use it double you can combine the colors And that alone adds a lot of a lot of personality to your little casita. So now I'm going to glue down the fabric trim. These are so fun. So, so far I've only made the four, um, but I love these so much. Oh my gosh, I'm going to make a whole bunch of these, you guys. These are so stinking cute. Oh, here's one thing that I'm going to do. Um, this is a synthetic trim and the edges were fraying. And so I'm sure you're familiar with this. I'm going to seal those edges so that it stops them from, from further fraying. You have to be super, super careful, you guys. I'm going to take my lighter and then just kind of pass the flame over the edge very quickly, very lightly. If you're going to do this, Please be very, very careful, okay? You don't want to hold that flame to the trim for too long because it will catch fire. So very light pass of the flame on the edge of the trim and it seals the edges again because it's synthetic. So it's kind of melts, it melts those plastic fibers and it seals it from, from fraying, okay? Just be careful. Doesn't that look so cute? Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Oh. 
so cute. Let's use my bone folder so that I don't, I don't get any more glue on my fingers. And it's easy. I didn't realize how easy it was to use the bone folder to position it so that it's all even. Ta-da! Oh my gosh! All the hearts, you guys. All the hearts for this little casita. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it so much. We're not going to leave it alone. We are going to create a tag to insert into the pocket. I'm going to show you that in just a second, but let's just admire this little casita. So stinking beautiful. Please, if you love this casita, please leave me a heart, a heart emoji in the comments. <laughs> so stinking cute. So cute. Oh, let me, let me plug in my computer before it runs out of battery. All right, there we go. Okay, going to set that aside. I added the clip just so that the little stamp can really secure. Okay, look at these beautiful tags, you guys. These are tags from the digital printable called Vintage Latin America. These are absolutely gorgeous and so easy. These are going to be so easy to work with. All we need to do is cut them and that's it. I did embellish mine a little bit. I added a little paper flower on mine and, but that was about it. And some trim. Oh, I did add trim on one of them. So look at this one. Oh, this one I also added a little, a little flower to her hair. And then there's one more I'm going to show you with the beautiful lady. And this one, I added a pink flower to her hair. And then I also had this, this beautiful trim that I added at the bottom. Look at how well that matches with her dress. <laughs> it's like, what? So stinking cute. Okay, let me point something out. The tag on the left, I printed on regular cardstock, just regular basic. I think it was 60 pound white cardstock. I just had it in my stash. I don't remember the name of it. But these that I'm about to cut up, you guys, these I printed on presentation paper. That's what this is. And I'm going to show you side by side the difference in the vibrancy of colors. If you look at them on their own, they look great. And they really do. Regardless of what you print on, whether it's copy paper, regular 60-pound um, white cardstock, or presentation paper, depending on what look you're going for, you will have slight variations, uh, but nothing, nothing like not a big, big, big difference. But if you want your colors to pop, the presentation paper is the best. And I chose the presentation paper for the tag. Okay. And I'm going to hold them side by side. Let me take a sip of my coffee first. Mm, it's so good. Okay. Look at how beautiful that tag is. See how vibrant, vibrant that is? That's the one on presentation paper. And then the one on the left is regular 60 pound wide cardstock. Look at the blue on how the blue is so much more vibrant on the right hand side. And now I'll place them side by side. I think the color blue is the one that pops the most. And maybe the black, her black hair, really, really stands out. So it's all up to you what you have or the look you're trying to accomplish. But, you know, the presentation paper is gorgeous. And it's nice and sturdy, so it's perfect for um, printing, using it when you are going to print let's say tags or even junk journal cards, that's the best way to go. So let's add another flower to her hair. These are white flowers, just a, a little white paper flower, and then I spritzed them with color. 
and that's how I got the, the blue and the pinks. I want to make sure that the flower stays in place, especially because it's going into an envelope. So it's going to in and out maybe several times. So I want to make sure that that little flower is going to be secure in her hair. So, so cute. These tags don't need any embellishment, you guys. I just happen to have these little paper flowers sitting on my desk. I thought about stitching all around the tags. Uh, maybe I'll do that in the future. You can make them as elaborate as you want, but just like this alone, oh my gosh, they're just so perfect for the casitas. I didn't know I was going to be using these beautiful tags in the casita envelopes, but when I was thumbing through all of the digitals and I thought how perfect to be able to use both of these together. Oh, so cute. So now I just, I grabbed some trim from my stash and I love this green and gold eyelash trim. I don't know where it came from. I only have maybe a 12 or 18 inch um, length of it. I don't know where it came from, but I would like to get more of it. So I need to go on the hunt for some, but isn't that gorgeous? And now I'm going to do the same thing I did with this tag. I'm going to add some of that beautiful pink trim because it looks like it's part of her dress you guys <laughs> and I'm going to do the same with this one it is a synthetic trim and it's easily fraying on the edges so I'm going to seal it again by just very lightly passing that flame over the edges I mean very lightly you guys I can't say this enough please be careful this is not something you have to do um so if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. I'm sure that when I glued it down onto the tag, the glue would have kept it from fraying. Um, but I just went ahead and sealed the edges anyway. So if you're going to do that with the flame, please be very careful. I can't say it enough. I can't get over how well that trim <laughs> matches the card. That was pure luck, pure luck. And I only have a little bit of this one left. Don't know where it came from. Just a bunch of scraps. I do have a lot of ribbon that's hanging in my wall, on my wall. So if you look at my intro, at the intro video on the back wall, I have my ribbons hanging on embroidery hoops. <laughs> so you'll probably catch a glimpse of that in the background. But these are just trims that are little bits and pieces that I have on my desk. Little scraps. I save all the scrap ribbons. Ta-da! Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to set that aside and let that dry for a second. I don't want it to get stuck to my tag. I sure hope you like this, you guys. I hope you love this and I hope you make some. It's nice that they match up so well together, the tag with the little casita. So, so cute. If you're going to make these, make sure your tag is going to fit perfectly in the pocket of your envelope. So just fold accordingly. I can't wait to show you guys how my journals are coming along. 
you are going to love them and these are going to be perfect in those junk journals. I cannot wait to show you what those are going to look like. You are going to love them. So beautiful, you guys, so beautiful. All the links, remember, all the links are down below. Just open that up. Before I end the video, I wanna thank you for hanging out with me. I do appreciate you so much for being here and I hope you enjoyed making a little casita if you played along with me. I sure hope that if you didn't get a chance to work on this today, that you gather your supplies and you make some of these because they are absolutely gorgeous. They're beautiful. You guys, thank you so much. And just a little reminder, if you are not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, you guys. I really appreciate if you do. <laughs> You'll have fun. We make tons of great projects. I work with envelopes and repurpose them. I'm now on the design team. I talk about all kinds of things that I do. By the way, I have a 10K on Saturday. Yes. Okay. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Bye.